even now as an adult, I understand like my coping mechanism. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I've done, I've like done those things, right? But like, it's not like my, that's not my vice, but I'll stress eat. And so like, I think that I started doing that like at five years old, cause like deal with the sadness, the depression. Like, I think I went to counseling when I was a kid and when my parents went through the divorce, um, but you feel unwanted. And so there is a good and bad side to this mentality that I've adapted, right? So you feel unwanted. I was a super shy kid. I start to gain weight. I'm not the popular kid because I'm not the good looking kid. I'm not athletic. I just love to sit in my room, play video games, drink hella juice and fucking eat <laughs> grown man sized meals as a, as a little kid. Um, my mom going through divorce, like she struggled a lot too. And so like we went from home cooked meals, my mom's Italian to fast food. We became like a fast food family, like overeating, like by like a normal American family. And so like, I didn't have these like, athletic mentalities growing up yeah and so if i think about like what pushed me into them Mm -hmm. was like i was so unhappy with the way that i felt the way that i looked um who i was kind of as a person not at my core not my morality but like the product of my actions that i had to do something to change it What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hypocritical AF Podcast. I'm your host, Albert Fig, and in this week's episode, we are joined by Cody Allen, athlete, uh, digital marketing marketing expert, um, multiple-time oh. business owner. Yeah, 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 a little of this, a little of that, little of that. Yeah, which we'll dive into <laughs> a little bit more. Um, content creator, and, you know, this last one, I'm a little hesitant on saying, um, just because I saw a post of yours, and it said how you were... You're a little bit annoyed by the word, but uh, we'll Influencer? dive into it. No, we'll close. Uh, entrepreneur? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for starters, that's actually what I wanted to get into real quick first is the word um, entrepreneur. Why does it like? Yeah. I mean, I off? guess, I don't know. For me, there's always a difference between like entrepreneur, business owner, mm-hmm. somebody who has a venture or somebody who like has like a, like a side hustle, which yeah. is kind of annoying too. Um, I just thought it was like kind of played out, you know, and it's one is it's super hard to spell. That yeah. was honestly like the first reason why I was like, what is this yeah. word? Yeah. Um, but as far as like being an entrepreneur, I think that there's a difference between like, like I said, there's layers to everything mm-hmm. there. Are, there's even a difference between I own a business and I own a company, right? Mm-hmm. A business is Digital Cartel. It is Cuso Cuts. It mm-hmm. are these companies. Uh, it, it, those are businesses, rather. A company is GE, Tesla. Those are, it's kind of like scalable. So there, there's there's a levels to everything. And so like when I think of entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I think of somebody that like, uh, I don't know, flips shoes on the side. When mm-hmm. I think of entrepreneur, I think of somebody who like, it was a thing back in the day, but had like only fans, mm-hmm. right? Almost like, like a certified hustler. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's hustlers and there's certified hustlers, yeah. right? So then when I think of like, then like there's people who call themselves serial entrepreneurs and it's like, all right, well you own multiple businesses. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not big on like titles or like different ways to make yourself sound better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I not like, I, I just show up every day and I just work, yeah. you know? Um, like at my companies, I'm the CEO, COO, and COMO, CMO at three different companies, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I'm just like the janitor, <laughs> right? I yeah. am I am the man who just shows up to work every day just like everybody else. I don't expect any more respect than anybody else at any of the companies. Um, anybody can shoot the shit with me, talk to me about whatever. Um, so I wouldn't like to be viewed as like, I, I think that also the word like entrepreneur it got used to the point where like people were like thought that like entrepreneurs were better than people that like had worked like a W2 job. Mm, right. Okay. Yeah, so like people would be like, Oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Like you just work a nine to five. And it was like, in reality, I'm reading this book called profit first right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy who wrote it said that 50% of businesses fail in the first five years. And he's like, and those are the lucky ones that people's businesses failed. Mm-hmm. He's like, cause most of the people who continue on their businesses end up being these cash eating monsters and you no longer are the business owner, but the business owns you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, is being an entrepreneur all that much better than working a nine to five? Like I tell people all the time, like, um, Oh, I wish I could just go do a podcast in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. I wish I could go do X, Y, and Z or go to the gym in the morning or whatever it is. Right. Cause I don't have to be at work. And I tell people like, man, like when something happens at your job, 
uh, what do you do? You have somebody you can just kind of pass it off to. Mm -hmm. I was like, at the end of the day, everything's going to be passed off to me eventually. Right. I was like, that's a level of like stress that like you wouldn't have to deal with at work. Right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, how well a company does or does not do, you don't care all that much. Right. That's true. Like you care as long as you got a job, as long as you can clock in, clock out. But with me, like it is my livelihood. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like, there's an added level of stress. It's like that risk reward thing. So when people talk about like being an entrepreneur and like how you, it's almost classified as like you're better than mm -hmm. someone else. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no man, like yeah. that, that's part of what turned me off to it and I, how hard it is to spell that. Yeah, that that's, I agree with that. It is definitely, um, annoyingly sometimes to spell because I try to sit, make myself some like, be like, you know, I'm smart. And then when I try to, to spell a word, especially when I'm around certain <laughs> people, I kind of stumble so that, you know, throws me for a loop. But also I think, uh, in a weird way too, I think social media kind of ruined that word for me too, entrepreneur, because yeah, it was all social. It, yeah. During the pandemic, it's like everybody became an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Right. Everybody was on unemployment and we're all yeah. entrepreneurs, right? It all started. <laughs> yeah. It's it all funny started too, actually, that you, when you talk about that, you, that you brought up, um, about the five year, uh, thing. Yeah. Um, I, you know, being a podcast host and podcast creator myself, I listened to a bunch of other podcasts. Right. And one time I was, uh, I want to say it was the Logan Paul impulsive podcast, but yeah. I was, I was listening because of ice cube. Now ice cube, you know, obviously his history, the music and everything that's, that speaks for himself. He's a West coast legend. Um, and just hip hop in general, but his business side, right? Oh his, his, yeah. The dude. It's, dude, it's, it's amazing. He's right? So smart. It, yeah. Amazing. And he was saying, um, the reason why I say it's interesting about the five year markup, because he was saying in business, like in the first five years, if you're not, ready to make a dime or just not even really gain break even is one thing but not even gain in the first five years he was like don't even start anything and that was from him you know right. it's funny because five years you know a lot of times people you know outside looking in or maybe are just getting into biz business or businesses they're going to be thinking five years that's a long time yeah you got to have a runway man especially like any businesses that i've started like um there's for sure ups and downs mm -hmm. but at the same time like you have to put yourself in a position where like you can either eat shit or not eat shit mm -hmm. for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Because you should be, it to kind of depend, depend on the business, right? Mm -hmm. One of my businesses, the agency, we're a business development agency. So we come in and we like lift up the hood on your business and like show you how you can be more profitable. We show you how you can streamline your processes to like scale your business. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times people start taking cash out too quickly. I did that. Yeah. One of my businesses, um, we took cash out just early because we're like, oh man, I'm fucking making money. Like yeah, what yeah, we're yeah. doing, yeah, right? Celebrating something, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, and then at the end of the year, we're like, oh shit, like we can't take out that much money anymore. We need more operating income, right? In order to grow the business. Or we could just like, again, it all depends on like what someone wants to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're like, hey, I just want to fucking like slowly incrementally like grow over the years and like, yeah. or maybe just flatline as this is just a living that I want to have, then great. Like there are ways to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you think that you're going to like, scale dramatically at a pace that you can kind of take on, but at the same time, take a ton of cash out of your business. Like you are sadly mistaken. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Or you're super high risk rather. Yeah. I mean, I think that word, like you said, is scaling, right? A lot of people, they get exactly. so fixated on seeing that, you know, that growth and that scale that, you know, they'd more organically. Um, you know, maybe I fall victim to that too, you know, I've yeah, done it. Like everybody. Right. Right. And it's, um, that is so that's actually one margin that or one thing that we can talk to talk to about actually is is the business side for stuff um how i like to tell people or guests that i have, have on for the first time i like to kind of tell them how i in, initially got introduced to them how i found them or why what brought me interest yeah in them, you know and just the podcast in general like yeah. how'd you this is a sick setup by the way yeah thank you shout out man and um so i remember it's um feeds and algorithms right and on, on instagram yeah yeah a, the more stuff you like, the more stuff you see, it's the algorithm is going to feed you into that type of stuff. Right. I, like I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I follow a lot of podcasts. Um, I like a lot of motivational stuff. I like stuff that I can get value from as opposed to just seeing, you know, world star hip hop clips or like power slaps. You, you know what I mean? Fight comp. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, although those are like good attention grabbers for the moment, but yeah. I like to, I like to digest more stuff that I can, kind of taken my day, you know, right. because it has, it has actual value. Exactly. And while I was scrolling, I came across one of your videos and it was talking about, um, models. You were saying there was two models that you kept repeating. You kept saying, 
and i remember i was just like Damn, he's fucking he's right what the like fuck? instagram models no oh, yeah yeah no no <laughs> motto like oh sayings. motto yeah, motto, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mottos, yeah oh yeah 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 and um i remember I, I came across him and it was just like yeah he's fucking he's right dude like what you know what i mean who are, who am i and i was like am i am i putting in everything and i was like putting everything everything and i was like kind of you know taking it in and i was just like huh you know and it was a good attention grabber for one and then I started looking into your page more and I was like, oh, this isn't, this isn't just a one-off or this isn't something that he's just saying to be cool in the moment. And I was like, he actually is putting in what he's saying. He has a business side for everything that he's saying. Um, everything, at least at front face value, seems strategic. And on top of that, he's doing like podcasting stuff too. You know, so it's like a collectively something that I'm interested in. You know what I mean? So of course. for the business side, um, how did you get um and i know a little bit about your background being a collegiate athlete football right um what point did you realize okay i'm transitioning what point and in, in if there was a specific moment but w at what point did it change over to like i'm gonna go be a into business owner be a business owner yeah so <clears throat> after i got done playing football i started working at the bank mm -hmm. i was like all right this is a good job like you know you just go work there and Mm -hmm. and hate yourself or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I was very blessed and fortunate enough to be working in Loomis at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know about Loomis, but it's a very tight-knit, small community, like very blue-collar. Yeah. And so I interacted with a ton of business owners. Um, and over the years of being in the space, I was in it for like three and a half years, maybe four years, um, I just met so many people that I was like, all right, man, like I, I, being in banking, I would look at obviously their financials and whatnot, and I'd be like, the ins and outs of business is in general is so interesting, mm -hmm. right? And so I'd see anything from general contractors and manufacturers to the guy that made the code for self scan groceries, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of interesting stuff, you know? And I'm always like, you know what? Like there's something that I believe regardless of how I feel about like being an entrepreneur and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I think that you can get rich anyway. You'll never get wealthy working for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that that's just the way that it is, yeah. right? Um, there are nuances or there are exceptions to that rather, but for the most part. And so I was like, all right, if I want to, at the scale in which I was going, I kind of knew how the next five, 10 years of my life would be. Projected. And I was, correct, yeah. yeah. And so like, I was like, if I want to make any sort of exponential growth outside of 10, 15, 20% at like the highest range, just like cross promotions, like to different businesses mm -hmm. or different companies rather. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, I'm gonna have to make a change. Yeah. Um, so I knew pretty early in my career, business career that I wanted to be like own a business someday. I didn't know what kind of business it was, but I wanted to own a business. Um, it wasn't until I got fired from, um, the broker dealer that I was working at mm -hmm. that I had the opportunity. Mm. So I am very much so a, like a lot of times like people will be like, Oh, like, Cody, you go and you're a risk taker, like you're an entrepreneur, you do all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I am a creature of habit and I get stuck in my ways. I've stayed in businesses too long, relationships too long, friendships too long, mm -hmm. just because like I don't like change, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So had I not got fired, I probably would have been in that industry today, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wearing a suit every day to work, which there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. There are times, there's been times, especially when, man, there's been times in my business career where things weren't going great. Um, money was shit. Mm -hmm. Um, client work was bad. I, I didn't have like a super promising future mm -hmm. that I was like, I wish I could just like shake an etch sketch board and just like start over as a fucking teller, yeah, right? whatever I could do. That. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's not always on the table. It's almost never on the table. Um, to just like fit, you got to figure it out. Like, I think that what I pride myself on is that no matter what situation I'm in, um, luckily, I've got a lot of experience now, but I'll figure it out regardless. Mm -hmm. um, education, not traditional education, but like experience rather. Yeah. And just being resourceful is something that I'm constantly honing in on. I'm right. constantly figuring out the best ways to do something. And every single time I go through a situation mm -hmm. in life in general, but definitely in business, I take note of that. I'm like, all right, like, this didn't go right. Why didn't it go right? Mm. Ask myself that question, figure out the answer. So next time I come into a situation from that, I'm like, 
you know what? I'm done. Mm. I, I made a decision. I learned like early in business who you do business with. That's not just partners, but that's people that like you bring onto your podcast or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like, um, there is a strict requirement that you need to set of requirements rather that you need to have for them. Mm-hmm. And number one being is like, I won't do business with anybody that doesn't like possess emotional intelligence. Mm. Yeah. And so like, I'll see that pretty early on. Like I do client work now and like, yeah. I've fired clients. Oh were, yeah, I'm sure. They were like, Hey, we're going to pay you again next month. And I'm like, Hey, you know what? Like, um, I think it's best that we go, go our separate ways. Mm-hmm. Right. And this is why it's never an attack, personal attack on them. And anything like that. I've never anything like that. It's just like, um, I think that it would be best for both of us mm-hmm. because I don't think that we work the best together. Mm, um, okay. Yeah. 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 And ownership's big too. Yeah. And of course they're, you know, more than likely they're not taking ownership on their part too. Right. <laughs> Every situation is different. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, like I have conversations with people. I'm just like, Hey, maybe I didn't explain like how we operate the best. Mm, okay. I guess like, yeah. don't text me at 8 PM and <laughs> tell me I have to do something right now because Another thing I've done in the past, like I've like when I first started my company, I had really shitty work life balance. Mm. Uh, it took wreaked havoc on every relationship I was in. There are girls that I was in relationships with that, like, if I could go back and apologize to them, then I would. Um, because like, just like people have to be committed to not taking a dollar out mm. of their business, they got to be committed to the people committed to them. Also, have to be aware that hey, this is a ride that I'm gonna have to take the back seat on for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, not always. Mm-hmm. But depending on how you only have a finite amount of time, yeah. right? And so that's something that you also have to be aware of that if you want to go all in on a business venture in any capacity, um, know that you are going to people are going to be yeah, people people around you are going to be the exception. Yeah, they're going to take exception to that. Take times. the backseat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard I, again going back to podcasts. Actually, um, I was listening to uh, I was listening to Shannon Sharp talk about that actually on his Club Shay Shay podcast, he was saying like how for years, I don't yeah. know if you saw this clip or not too, but he was saying like how he, for years he was a terrible father. He was a terrible <clears throat> boyfriend growing up and everything because everything yeah. it wasn't football. It was, it was backseat. backseat. Yeah. See, and that's tough, man, because I've learned over the years and I'm not professional anything, mm-hmm. you know? So that's a level of dedication that I've never reached. And I don't know what that even takes. I have all the respect in the world for all of my friends that have played football and that are still playing football. Mm-hmm. And anybody that's even played for a small amount of time, I have all the amount of respect for you, right? Cause football is my sport. I can understand it, mm-hmm. but I don't want to, I come from like a very simple like life. Like uh, my mom still doesn't even know what I do for work. Yeah. She, she doesn't understand. She yeah. doesn't give a shit. Nor yeah, nor does she give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Because when all the dust is settled, and at the end of your life, like when everything's kind of laid out, um, it's how you made people feel. And so, like, I don't want to anybody I date, anybody my kids. I don't have any kids yet. Like mm-hmm. anybody I, I is that is in my life, even like a friend, mm-hmm. to resent me or the things that I did. I e like dump all my time into a business. Um, because it took away from my relationship with them. Mm. And so I've seen that shift as I've gotten old and 32 now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm right behind you. But fuck man, when I was like 27, 28, 29, mm-hmm. like I didn't have it there, you know? Yeah. Um, it's funny cause that's like, I don't know if it's like a causation or correlation thing, but like that's around the time that I started going to therapy too. Mm-hmm. And so like, I think that like, have you ever seen this show billions? Yeah. So like I reached out to my therapist and I was like, Hey, like, um, she was my therapist at the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, Hey, I own a bunch of companies. And I think that the thing that's holding me back mentally is my mind or holding me back in general is like my mental status. Right. So it's Mm -hmm. like, I want to be able to like unlock that to have like the most performance, like the highest level of performance. Mm -hmm. And so like we end up going to, I end up going to therapy and like dive in. It's like more about like abandonment issues, my dad and all that kind of shit, all the personal mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. But I truly believe that like, um, you don't, you can't maximize like your potential mm-hmm. if you're like being constricted by your own mental, like mentally, like inhibiting factors, like For the sure. different shit that's in your life. And that's mm-hmm. like, I don't think you can burn the candle at both ends. If you're not mental right between the ears, I don't mm-hmm. think that you can have a successful business. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot to it. You'd be very aware of who you are as a person. Yeah, also too, and on the other side of that too is also resentment, man. Like I, I've I've talked to people yeah. and I've been around people. I, I've actually um, a few episodes back, uh, I sat down with a uh, with the 
marriage family marriage uh, therapy and family counseling uh, therapist one of friends of mine and we were talking about you know the vast majority of clients that she sees whether they're children to uh, individ- cup- individuals and then couples as well that right. she like, gets with and everything and you know a lot of it's confidential you know they have the you know right right but she can just speak generally She's speaking generally i mean i mean the amount of resentment that holds people back you know what i mean that that blocks that mental gone to that fog. dude you know what i mean that is so fucking it's one of those aspects that's something mm-hmm. that like the stuff in your personal life from your past like the way that you view a particular gender mm-hmm. race sexual mm-hmm. orientation like there are some people that are walking around that are being crippled yeah internally because it's pride month this month yeah there are some people They're walking eight. around that like can't stand yeah. being in the same room as like a black guy or oh, a white and just, guy and just you imagine know? The, the the amount of friction that they're holding on to and the, yeah the teeth, you know what i mean grinding the teeth literally white like, knuckling their hands yeah. and it's like uh tension it it's just doesn't allow you to make educated and non-emotional decisions mm-hmm. which kind of goes back to being emotionally intelligent right mm-hmm. and so like everybody's got their shit everybody's got their quirks yeah. if you will yeah. but uh all these things, if you're not very like aware of like your past and your triggers, if that mm-hmm. is a word that we want to use today, mm-hmm. um, you're going to be, you're going to be holding yourself back in some way at some point in your career. And that's even like in your personal life too. Oh, and also even to go more further than this, that one too, I can even make the argument of how some people that are not willing to grow and set certain oh, stuff. Fuck, you know what yeah, I mean? Man, like there like, was, there was one post I had, you know, reposted a while back that I always, I, I keep, like screenshot and saved on my phone just to look back anytime but uh and it's funny because i'll look back and i'll see it and i'll see how it's currently playing in like um friends lives family lives and everything but the quote essentially is without messing it up was um you can't blame you can no longer blame how you are right now on your past and continue to blame as you get older and just have resentment and continue to have that as a fault and be like well i'm still like this because of that well i'm still like this because of this you know yeah man it uh there's just no that's that that speaks so like thanks for sharing that like that's so powerful because like i can think of times in my life like to go into being like emotionally intelligent i also would only do business with somebody who's open-minded right mm-hmm. and i don't i don't mean like you got to accept everything mm-hmm. i just mean like just listen right, right. Mm-hmm. um even like in my life i find like even when people do not great things mm-hmm. right i'm like all right tell me where your head was at when that happened mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so it's just like let me try to understand you but to go into that quote like so i am a huge advocate of like what have you done for me lately? What have you done for yourself lately? So yeah. like shit has happened to everybody. Everybody's yeah. got traumas in Everybody's some capacity, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't care after a certain amount of time. Yeah. Like figure it out. You're a grown up, man. Mm-hmm. Like figure it the fuck out. I'll give you like a personal example. So like I I have, in my opinion, mm-hmm. the best mom in the world. Yeah. She's awesome, right? Mm-hmm. One of my best friends, if not my best friend. I have an amazing stepdad. They've mm-hmm. been married for it'll be 23 years in August. Damn. Um, That's an accomplishment. Right. And so I'm 32, so he's been in my life since I was basically eight. Yeah. Um, my birth dad, mm-hmm. for one reason or another, dipped when I was like five or six. Mm-hmm. So my parents got divorced. I haven't seen him since I was six years old. Damn. I talked to my birth dad for the first time in 14 years in mm-hmm. 2020. Mm-hmm. No, not 14 years. However long it is. Yeah, it yeah. had been a long time. Yeah. 2020 down. In 2020. We had a, sh- a phone conversation. Yeah. And that conversation went kind of to the tune of, um, hey, you know what? Like I knew that like you had a very, well, I'll make this short, but I, basically I told him like, hey, I know that you had like a very traumatic childhood. Mm-hmm. Grew up in foster care. Um, in the eighties, you're yeah. a black man in San Francisco. I'm sure that that was tough, right? Mm-hmm. The shit that happens in foster care in, in America, it's like one of the more, most broken systems in America, right? Next oh, yeah, to our yeah. prison system, right? Yeah. Um, he was never adopted. And so he aged out from five, he was in foster care for 13 years. Mm-hmm. So 13 years of just trauma and damage and hating his dad who, for dropping him off in a park. 
Yeah, we have yeah. right. So like all of this happened to my dad. So when he was 29 and he had me, was he prepared to be a father? Mm-hmm. Not a shot in hell, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I kind of told him that, and his response to that was like, "Yeah, you're like you have no idea what happened to me." Yeah, and I'm like, at some point, sir. Yeah. You got to take accountability for your shit. Like, yeah, you yeah. had a fucked up life or maybe even have one. Mm-hmm. But it's like at some point sack up and be like, you know what? Like I can think of 40 different things I did wrong trying to raise you. Mm-hmm. But that didn't come out of his mouth. Yeah. So that's not somebody I would do business with basically. <laughs> yeah. It's what it's I can maybe maybe not. I then no specifics, man. But when I tell you similar, similar stuff, um, with my dad too and, and me I, I, so i'm a father i have a three-year-old mm-hmm. and i see how i grew up and i see how maybe um and we're, we're better now me and my dad we're better now but right. you know go in and out too when i was younger um a lot of it wasn't by i have to say choice or fault but i understand him i understand him now as, a dad. I'm a, as you're dad as too. being a dad and yeah. an adult now looking at it i get where you're coming from you know right. what i mean he did the same some thing shit. he didn't know his his dad like that like he did and then his dad took off on him too for right. years so, so it's what he knew he, he did resented, what he knew. he resented his father and you know what the crazy thing is uh, j- i hope i'm not giving away too much info but um just recently like two weeks ago his dad just recently passed away and for you know i'm 31 for 30 years uh or 31 years or whatever i never met the guy i never met his dad so my actual grandpa i never actually met him the uh, um his stepdad for years that, that i grew up knowing i thought that was my grandfather you know turns out it wasn't i mean i still consider Real, it my grandfather, right 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 but it wasn't you know his That's, actual dad that is I wild i yeah. didn't know that you know and so it's but he, now he's at this point he's at the stage where we often get he we still keep in contact we still commu- great in communication um but we'll he'll, he'll often text us and be like you know just a reminder like you know i'm, I'm like this and you know I'm, I'm sorry for all this time loss i wish things would be different and so he does send those you know um, but like I said, as a father now too, I look back and I, I look at my son and I'm just like, I couldn't do that. You know, I couldn't do that. Exactly. And that's the big thing is about breaking the cycle, yeah. right? I'm not fortunate enough or blessed enough to be a father yet. I, I hope one day, one day sooner than later. Yeah, yeah. Um, I absolutely love kids. Yeah. Um, but people ask me like, uh, there's always circumstances. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to somebody the other night and I was like, I told her, I was like, um, I don't care. Like if I went to a Vegas and hooked up with some girl mm-hmm. and she got pregnant and she lived in Minnesota mm-hmm. and she was like, well, like, and what if she lived in Minnesota and that's where she lived? And it's like, all right, what I had not, she's like, would you just like, what would you do with your life? Like you have your whole life in like Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, I'd become a Minnesota resident. Yeah. That's what I would do, man. Cool. Like, and you having your son now, like yeah. you probably understand that. Born, yeah, he was born and raised here. I, 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 I wasn't. But I'm you would, from here. yeah. But so you, oh, so yeah, yeah. so yeah, so it's yeah. like <laughs> this is my life is where my kids at now, yeah. right? Not everybody has the means to do that. I mm-hmm. get that, right? But um, I like to believe that like you got to break the cycle, exactly. Um, exactly. And regardless of your demons, regardless of your fears, regardless mm-hmm. of what you have going for you. Mm-hmm be honest with yourself about like what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because like, for example, I used to always use like excuse, like, Oh, you know, like I'm working so hard on business, like with my Mm ex-girlfriends working so hard on business, like for us. But in reality I was doing it like mostly for me. Right. So like in the event that like I had a kid somewhere else, I'd be like, all right, like it's time for me to like sack up and like go there, Mm -hmm. you know, um, regardless of like business. And I think that that becomes now a part of your life. And Mm -hmm. I don't know, man, you, you shared that and it's like, that that's respectful respectable because like i think that one of the biggest problems in america is like fatherless homes oh yeah Girl. It, it, dude <laughs> i i swear i it's it's crazy that we're talking about all this because i just today too um there was a statistic i forget the exact number as far as percentage goes wise but it was saying like how the amount of less crime the amount of less um you know troubled teens right uh both men and women how it would diminish had their fathers played a bigger role in their lives. You know what right. I mean? The amount of less of everything, like not just tr- crime, not just mental health, but um, love and compassion. Like right. I said, it, like you said, we were talking about breaking the cycle too. To go back to my dad, he 
um, to his credit, too, or his defense, he didn't get that from his dad either. His, that, that bond, right? And he grew mm-hmm. up with all brothers, no sisters. And on top of that, he had two kids by the time he was like 16. 16 with two kids. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, fuck. That's yeah. insane. And I'm saying, but so to break that cycle and, and, and to get that love and the compassion, um, maybe that's why I'm so you know, close to my son. And I, I, you know, um, people say like, man, don't, don't over baby him. It's like, man, he's three years old. Listen, I'm going to over baby him right now. Okay. He's three <laughs> years old. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I'd like to think that like guys like me and you are more like the exception mm-hmm. because a lot of times when you're modeled to not show up, when you're modeled to not be a present father, when you're modeled by your father mm-hmm. to not be there for them, mm-hmm. um, that's what you tend to do. Yeah. But I guess guys like me and you, like you feel that you remember that. And Mm -hmm. then you go like, all right, I don't want anybody that I love to feel like this. So I'm going to show up for them. I'm going to be there for them. I'm going to show them love and compassion. So like, I don't know. I think there's a massive issue, um, in America with not present fathers, Mm -hmm. why they're not present. That's up for debate. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think that at the end of the day, you just got to fucking show up, man, yeah. because you, if not even like from a selfishly selfish standpoint, like mm-hmm. you will feel better about it. But like the person that you created yeah. is now going to go into society mm-hmm. and be a reflection of how good of a job you do. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You know? And yeah. so like, if we see like America taking a downturn, that's because we've kind of like, part of the reason is because, um, we are failing as like leaders and parents. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm hmm. I mean, even furthermore than that, 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 um, I know I'm using that word a lot, (laughs) but, um, I've even felt that way even before my son was born before I was even, yeah, I don't even have a kid. Yeah. I was even thinking that years, years prior. And maybe that's just like a similar, like you said, maybe we are the exception. And I can think of times, I I remember a distinct moment, um, when stuff clicked for me and clip change. Um, and actually this is, it segues into this perfect, um, question I was going to ask you a lot of a a lot of um the mental approach i guess the the attitude that you go for not just your everyday lifestyle from the time you wake up tackle your businesses you get your lifts in and everything that you're doing i've noticed a lot of time you credit it from sports you say like an athlete's perspective an athlete's mindset but i want to dive and dig a little deeper if that's okay with you prior to that man like bro there's, there's got there had to been something before that not to say that i'm taking any less credit away from the athletics portion of it, but there's, there's got it. I'm wondering if there was something before that, where there's something that happened, something you could pick from that gave you that even mindset first. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of it stems from shame. Mm. I think a lot of the hard work stem from being so unhappy with myself growing up. Like I was like a relatively like normal kid, like zero to five. Yeah. Um, parents get divorced and then like, I look back at trends and it's funny cause like you look at like your school picture and that's the only thing like you really have like to commemorate like metric, some of the memories. Huh? Yeah. yeah. It's like every year I started showing up heavier and heavier and heavier. And so like by the time I was in fifth grade, I was like over 150 pounds. And yeah. I know that because I tried out for pop Warner and they're like, you're too big. You got to play with like eighth graders, ninth graders. Yeah. And so like my mom was like, you can't play football. I didn't play football till I got to high school cause I was too heavy. Um, and so I think that it started probably, it was like, even now as an adult, yeah. I understand like my coping mechanism. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I've done, I've like done those things, right? But like, it's not like my, that's not my vice, but I'll stress eat. And so like, I think that I started doing that like at five years old, cause like deal with the sadness, the depression. Like, I think I went to counseling when I was a kid and when my parents went through their divorce. Yeah. Um, but you feel unwanted. And so there is a good and bad side to this mentality that I've adapted, right? So you feel unwanted. I was a super shy kid. I start to gain weight. I'm not the popular kid because I'm not the good looking kid. I'm not athletic. I just love to sit in my room, play video games, drink hella juice and fucking eat <laughs> grown man sized meals as a, as a little kid. Um, my mom going through divorce, like she struggled a lot too. And so like we went from home cooking meals, my mom's Italian to fast food. We became like a fast food family, like overeating, like by like a normal American family. Mm-hmm. And so like, I didn't have these like, athletic mentalities growing up. Yeah. And so if I think about like what pushed me into them Mm -hmm. was like, I was so unhappy with the way that I felt, the way that I looked, um, who I was kind of as a person 
not at my core, not my morality, but like the product of my actions that I had to do something to change it. Mm. And so I hit puberty, I like stretched out. Like I have some natural athleticism, yeah. right? So I'm, I'm blessed in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I started working really hard because, I mean, if you want to get down deep into it, like my dad left, could I control that? No, but it, it, it did it make me feel unwanted as a kid? A hundred percent, right? Yeah, something sure. that, But it's something I couldn't control. My weight, I felt like I couldn't control it. My nutrition, people liking me, I couldn't control any of these things. But mm-hmm. eventually I found something that I could control. That yeah. was athletics, right? Mm-hmm. You put in a lot of work, you get better, you get more playing time, all these sort of things. Yeah. And so um, I won't say that saved me because I wasn't on a fucking path or <laughs> whatever, yeah. but um, it definitely changed the trajectory of my life in a lot of ways because I found something that if that I could ultimately kind of control it felt like. Mm-hmm. And I started playing team sports. You can't control them a hundred percent, but um, every sport, like when I played football, I played quarterback. Mm-hmm. When I played baseball, I was the bad cleanup, right? I played linebacker in college and that was a big shift for me because I didn't have as much of a out control and outcome of the game. Mm-hmm. But like, I always liked to be in control of like the outcome of the things that I was doing. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. prior to sports, I felt like I had a lot less control, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, even in my life currently, where we don't feel like we're in control of our own like lives, if you will, you get into a cog in the wheel. And so that's why starting a business, I was like, I can't get myself fired. Like if I'm, if I'm fired, if we do good, if we do bad, if we do indifferent, it's Mm kind of on me. Mm -hmm. If I'm working within a system, like, for corporate America, you're still a key contributor in some capacity, but at the end of the day, like there's a lot more shit that happens that determines your success. Yeah. The politics of it and a lot of other stuff. So I know I kind of went around it, but to answer your question, like I think that it stems back from not being happy with my situation where I was at in my life. And again, this was young. This is when I was in grade school. Um, but that's why I moved into athletics and sports and then you you learn so much about yourself um playing these these games and they are so much more than games for a lot of people regardless of what the sport is and i'm very strict on like what i consider a sport i have like seven that i actually consider sports (laughs) but like even if you're a badminton player and if you are dedicated to that um and you go through the process and what it takes to be the best at whatever you want to do there's a lot of life skill that's learned in that way what about softball I saw you. you I'm very good at softball. Yeah, I'm softball, very good yeah. at slow pitch softball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is softball is what girls softball is a sport. Slow pitch softball is not a sport. <laughs> 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 but I play my heart. I got a scrape on my knee to prove it. Yeah, yeah, I am turning and burning on the bases. Yeah, yeah, I am running I down every ball. But uh, we'll reserve that sport for women. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're <laughs> <for them. laughs> That's their thing. But that, it's interesting that you said that. And, and, and um, like I said, I wanted to dive in it because I, you know, if I ask myself that same question, I would go back to a certain time um, in high school because my mentality shifted as I got older. My mentality, um, I can I can point out to certain uh, time frames in years, almost like high school, middle school. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when I was in the military, those there's what branch of the military? I was in the army. Nice, thank you for your service. No, no problem. Yeah, I, I actually moved. I went. I straight from. I was in. I was stationed in Georgia, Fort Benning, and when I got out, I actually drove straight from Fort Benning all the way here to Sacramento. And I'd never been here before ever in my life. It's a hell of a place to land. <laughs> I, could, I just fucking drove, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, 2,342 miles. I remember, I know that because I have it tattooed on me. I was um, going to say. <laughs> but uh, it, it was the, uh, I, I, so I can credit that mentality and going through and everything. Um, and there's different, like I said, time frames that, that kind of shifted my mindset. When I moved out here, this shifted my mindset and right. everything. But the one that I would go back to and credit for, like I said, if there was more, one time frame, it was my uh, senior senior year in high school. The first, and, and um, I, I just give you a background story on it, right? My, uh, my f- first semester, so it was four quarters, the first semester, two quarters, um, I, you know, was, I, I was in like this long committed relationship. It went, after a couple of years, it went, you know, south, it split up. Yeah. And during that time frame too, I had, um, there was stuff that I was being involved in, in the streets that I shouldn't have been involved in. And then a brother of mine, he, uh, he didn't Where did you go to high school? Down south. 
um, in the valley, it's a small little town called King City. Okay. Do you yeah, know where yeah. Do you know where Salinas is at or Santa yeah, Cruz? Yeah. It's oh, south yeah. of that. Okay. So it's a little valley, um, very very small area, and um, furthermore, I actually grew up ten ten miles south of that. Um, it's a little little ranch town called San Lucas. There's a population like three hundred ninety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, my eighth grade graduating class was like nine people. <laughs> and so um so during that year um my brother was arrested um he actually is still arrested to this day um he was he got served like 84 years in prison my dad uh took off to uh to move he, he it, well he got kicked out so i'm gonna say too but he ended up moving to san diego san isidro the area and um uh, uh, a couple of friends around me were like passing away you know what i mean and on top of all that, I wasn't even on par to to graduate. Mm -hmm. So I had a minimal, at a very minimal. I was like, I'm not even like, because my mom, uh, between my siblings and everything, no one ever graduated high school. My parents didn't graduate high school. Grandparents, no one graduated high school. So I was like, I'm becoming a product of what I'm being accustomed yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Know what I mean? You're just following right in line with your rest so of your family. December time frame came, and I remember it was like, <clears throat> I'm gonna make the shift. I gotta change. Try to get you know everything. I ended up squeezing by, but I remember that's when I enlisted. I enlisted at at 17 i was yeah i was 17 and a half i think i had to get my mom had to sign for me to to, to join right so i swore in um she didn't like it either because it was a combat mos she thought I was, she literally thought i was gonna die she told me i don't want to sign yeah so 2011 no it's 2009 2000 2009 yeah, 2010. Uh, okay. oh yeah yeah because you're just yeah you're 2010 just yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so yeah. yeah my mom 2010 yeah 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 continue so I, gr I graduated june yeah, 2010, because I graduated June 24th, 2010, and June 28th, 2010, four days later, I was on an airplane gone already for training. And um, that was that initial, and that was all within six months. That six months was crucial. That yeah, changed yeah, it changed your life. Everything, you know what I mean? And that's one time, time that I can look back and be like, you know, that was the main thing. Now, prior to that, you know, in middle school, elementary school, there was like kind of little wrinkles of everything that I can like pick apart and everything. But if I had to put it back to one time frame, it'd be that. You are you, are you were you close to your mom or are you close to your mom? Very, yeah, very close. Well, I would say now she's like, she's she's up there and hey, is it menopause? Nah. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, what yeah. she, she yeah, always yeah. says. She always like it's menopause, it's menopause. No, but yeah, she was. Uh, I I was really. We grew up where I grew up. Um, it's a bad area. Um, lot not wealthy, like really poor area. You yeah. Know? yeah. And so, um, you know, welfare, food stamps, um, the bread lady twice a month. Um, sneaking to get food, hiding lines, saying that I'm a part of another family when I'm not, when I'm just bringing in, you know, the, the bread and the, the fucking powdered milk or the canned milk just to get us by. Um, single mom at the time, like I said, dad's gone to, and then I was the youngest and I was the only boy in the, in the house, okay. you know? So yeah, I, I'm still closer. Yeah. Think, yeah. So you guys went through a lot. What was, um, what was that like asking your mom, like, can I enlist? So we were uh, we were staying. We had got sixth grade. We got evicted. We were in an apartment in a town a townhouse they consider an apartment in Greenfield, and we got evicted out of there. Mm -hmm. And my grandparents were living in San Lucas. Like I said, it's, it's a small little ranch town, two two cities over, and we had nowhere to go. So right. my grandparents <clears throat> took us in, and um, I developed an even bigger bond with my grand my grandfather. He was like means the world to me. he was like my and not just i'm not just saying that because of my dad he was everybody's dad like my dad was close That's to him too man that he was i haven't tattooed on me he passed away a year and a half ago and that crushed me but um so we were i say all that to say we were we we're in his living room and i remember i talked to him about it i was like you know thinking about joining and he it was two different perspectives because he was just like i get it like you know there's nothing here there's right nothing right here. he's like yeah, yeah of course you know my mom was just like no 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 you're gonna go in the she didn't know what milits just like me I didn't know what I'm so oblivious or so you know naive to what to everything military just world. even education I didn't know that there were branches I thought the military was just one right. thing you it know it was just a bunch of dudes with yeah guns. just a bunch yeah. of dudes uniforms <laughs> and shit like that you know I didn't know until I went into the recruitment office that there were there was the army there was the navy you know Air marines Force, so marines, on and so yeah. forth so when I told her. Um, be my joint she was like no 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 and then the recruiter actually brought me to my grandparents house and he had to sit there with me and then he had to kind of pitch the reason why now granted you know it is a recruiter so that's what they do correct but um i think it was really just i told her i go look look what's happening right now like between all the stuff the prisons the the people getting 
there was like there was a certain time frame man, there was a shooting in that little small ass area every single week you know what i mean and i was like and i got no plans like i don't know what i'm doing i don't i don't have a, a career path i'm not fortunate at that time dude i was like 140 pounds too i'm already small as it is but I'm like 140, so I was like, athletics is not in the picture for me. Right. You know what I mean? Even though I, I did, it's a running joke that I have on the podcast. But I was a seventh grade flag football, flag football MVP. Hell yeah, baby! No big deal, you know. Come um, out my Sunday league <laughs> play every Sunday in Roseville Mahaney. And, um, and so uh, I just told her, I was like, I just I got to do something. I got to get out of here. And I think she, when she saw how serious and you know, kind of I had, always say passionate, but how serious I was about you'd it. You've done your homework, right? And she was like. All right. So she signed it. Uh, the trajectory of your life prior to going in mm -hmm. six months prior, mm -hmm. you think you'd be alive today? Have you stayed in San Lucas or? No, probably not. Yeah. If I'm being honest. And, and the reason why there was a pause is because I, I despite you, all the dumb shit I was doing, you weren't I, in it. In I it. had, I just had a, I had a smarter head. Like I right. knew, I knew I did. It's like, you know, there's more to life than this, you know? Yeah. There's just always people that get caught up in shit by proximity, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like we've all been, there. I'm from like a smaller town mm -hmm. in Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not from SAC. I'm from, have you heard of like Santa Rosa? Petaluma, yeah. So I'm from Roner Park. Oh yeah. I yeah. was actually just over there two days ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So I was born, <laughs> I was born and raised in Roner Park. Um, yeah. And I can't tell you how many friends I have that just been caught up in shit in Santa yeah. Rosa, you yeah. know? And it's tough because there's so many kids and there's so many guys and so many women that, um, you just fall victim to your situation, you know? And mm -hmm. it's tough to make that decision. It's an emotional one. It's like, do I want to leave? Yeah. And a lot of times the military is such a good option for so many people. Mm -hmm. Um, and also too, there wasn't much to look for, to be honest in that area. It was right. either people were going to college and it was like, you got that down good. Uh, it was either you're working in the fields like i was working in the fields during the summertime you know mm -hmm. so it's like you're working in the fields or you're just honestly just selling selling drugs to get by there wasn't much right, so you had two options you yeah. weren't going to college at the time unless nope. you went to juco right which is probably what, like i don't know the closest like one part now that was like the yeah. local one and then so you're either in the fields probably not making great money mm -hmm. or you're selling drugs making good money but the risk is super high mm -hmm. right and a lot of times people turn to drugs because they're like well i don't got options yeah God forbid getting strung out on them, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, again, it's about making a decision to break the cycle. Yeah. You're like, I got to do something to shake this shit up. Mm -hmm. Cause you saw, and you looked at the next five years of your life. You looked at the next 10 years of your life. It was different than when I did it, but you're like, I got to do something to fucking change this up. Sometimes people make the wrong decisions. Sometimes people make the right ones. When I was choosing schools to go to, um, I played option quarterback in high school. So like I got heavily recruited by Naval Academy. Mm. 2009 was when all the Iraq, sh Iraq shit was going down, mm -hmm. as you know. Mm -hmm. And so, like, my mom wouldn't let me go to the Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. She was like, hard no. Yeah. I was very fortunate enough and blessed to, like, obviously receive scholarships to other places, but, like, that would have changed the direction of my life as well, too, right? Because you're in college for four or five years, and then you're in the, the service for another four years. Mm -hmm. Um could have gone either way, you know? Yeah. But it's like, it's just, there's so many, and you got to make them at a young age. You're not an adult at 18, mm -hmm. 17 and a half. You got to make them at a young age and it changes the trajectory of your whole fucking life. It oh, is yeah. just pretty wild, man. Yeah. Tell me to move cr literally across the country. I turned 18 at my duty station. <laughs> 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 at my duty station. Think about that. I turned 18 at my duty station. You know what I mean? And in the fucking <clears throat> small ass little place that, you know what I mean? I my son never, I don't have no family over there. No, no communication. Exactly. There. Yeah. And so you did four years. Yeah. Four, four in total. Done. So I did three and like, um, three and nine months, like, like active. And then I took the last couple of months, um, is when, uh, I, I had saved up all my block leave and I okay. used that to come over here. Yeah, okay. Early, Cause I, cause I, I came initially for school and there was a time there was, they had a, you know, um, what is it called? Um, like orientation. Yeah. Yeah. And then so the you wanted to be there. So I had to make sure I make it or else I wasn't going to fit the fiscal year. Yeah. Or else you'd have to start a year later and yeah, you had exactly. a few months or eight months or whatever mm -hmm. where you didn't have shit to do. And then I, and then I drove. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Stopped um, in Texas. It was a good little, it was a good drive. Honestly, I, 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 I'm kind of, maybe not so much now actually, but at that, I remember a couple of years ago, I was like, I kind of want to make that drive again. Should wait till your son gets older and do that, it with yeah. them. That's it'd be, it'd be one, definitely one thing to do, you know? Yeah, I definitely like that one. Um, 
but I want to talk about actually the businesses a little bit more too. Of course. Okay. So how does one get involved in those type of businesses that you have? You know, and I want to list them all too. So which one do you feel? Digital you cartel. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's really the two main ones are digital cartel or three main ones. Um, Cuso cuts and then Helios. Those are like the three main ones. Mm -hmm. So digital cartel actually, I got fired from my job and I was mm -hmm. kind of like at this point where I was like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like, am I going to go back and work? I even applied it like, um, where did I apply Merrill Lynch? I don't remember. I applied somewhere where I was like, maybe I'm just going to do this for forever. Yeah. But I was like, I oh, don't know, man. Like, I, it's funny. I got fired from my job. I texted like one of my best friends, um, Corey, he, he owns his, him and his family own a car dealership. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey man, uh, just got fired from my job. Like I might need a job. Mm -hmm. And he's like, got you no matter what. If I called him today, he'd probably, he'd give me a job. Yeah. It's good, Solid. really good man. Solid. Um, and so I knew I had that going for me. And then I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to go back and just start working a mundane job again. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't tell my mom that I got fired yet. Yeah. Yeah. I explained that. <laughs> You're avoiding that one. Um, and I have like a former friend of mine that I didn't know what he did for work. Mm -hmm. but I knew he seemed well off. Yeah. And, uh, he hits me up and he's like, Hey, I, I want to teach you how I make money. And I was like, am I about to start selling drugs? <laughs> and I'm like, shit. I don't, at that point I was like, yeah. I got no options. Let's yeah, go do yeah. it. Let's go figure yeah. it out. Long story short, he was in like internet marketing, online marketing. And so that's what got me into it was mm -hmm. somebody reached out to me mm -hmm. because they thought that they saw a promise in me or whatever it is. Uh, because I held myself in a certain capacity. Um, and they're like, Hey, this guy's probably got something to him, mm -hmm. you know? And then after that, I was on that, what, like unemployment train, like everybody gets after they get fired from a job yeah, yeah, yeah. that rides for a few months. Yeah. And I just lived off that, which was like 400 bucks a week or every two weeks. I don't yeah. remember what it is. Um, and I just buried myself in learning about the space. That's dope. A lot of times people think that they can just see somebody on Instagram, like, Oh, that's how you make a million dollars on fucking Amazon or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, Oh, you can do it too. Just take my course. And it's like, dude, you have to bury yourself. There's no, nobody's got a course myself included. Mm -hmm. That's going to teach you how to, that that alone will teach you how to become rich or be successful in any way. Well, it's like nobody's you said, there's got no one. magic pill too. There's no magic, magic pill, pill for it, man. It, mm -hmm. So it's like, nobody's got the one answer. Mm -hmm. So I buried myself in it and I had success early. I had fails early, failures early rather. Um, and there's a lot of ups and downs, but every single time I just come back to the table and it's like, I mean, it's, if you don't think about it, like baseball, like eventually, like the first time you ever step into a batter's box, like, and somebody hums a, a fastball by you, like it is new, you are not used to it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, maybe if you're lucky, you just stick your bat out there and eventually you're gonna foul something off, right? Yeah. Sometimes you'll get a hit, but every single time you gotta show back up to bat. Mm -hmm. And eventually the game slows down. Eventually you start seeing some tendencies. Eventually you start to be able to hit the ball, home runs, whatever you wanna call it, right? Mm -hmm. In this analogy. Um, but still, even the most veteran batter strikes out sometimes. Right. Yeah. So it is very much the equivalent of that. Mm, um, okay. but you gotta study it. You gotta get in your playbook. You have to just make sure that whatever you want to get into, you know, all of the things associated with the risks, the pros, the cons, the, the partnerships. Like I started going to conventions, like I'm going to one of them next month. And I just was like deep in it. Mm. I was trying to make all the partnerships that I can. That's one of the things like hold yourself in a professional manner at all times. Whenever you're like around your peers, yeah. because like you never know who's going to look at you and be like, Hey, this kid's got something or Promising. this older man has something or older woman has something that doesn't really matter what, what age you are. But it's like, you got to make sure that like people are looking at you in a way that they're like, all right, this is somebody that I would do business with. Mm. Um, and that's kind of how we started. And I mean, we've reinvented ourselves a few different times that mm -hmm. company, um, we've gone different directions. We've tried things that didn't work. We've tried things that do work. Um, yeah. that's just business. That is business, that's man. Business, like, yeah. and that's the thing right there. That's gotta be the attitude. You like, can't take it too personally and you mm -hmm. can't be too emotionally attached yeah. to any one thing. Right. Exactly. If you're like, 
I only do marketing for gyms. Mm -hmm. And then like, that's all you do and that's your bread and butter. And then like COVID happens and Mm -hmm. gyms aren't open. So they're like, I don't want to do your business with you right now. And it's like, well, this is what I do. This is what I do. And you keep trying to pound your head up against a wall. Eventually you're going to fail. You have to be very, um, malleable. You have to be able to change shape and change form. You got to be able to pivot, man. Exactly. Yeah. And so that business, um, I learned a lot of things, did everything, learned how to do everything myself, whether it be paid advertising, build a website, email market, like I do it all, mm-hmm. right? I don't do any of it the best. Yeah. So I got hire people that are better than me now. Yeah. Um, but I can do it all. Yeah. Outsource. Right. Yeah. Outsource, you build a team, um, only work with people that you trust, mm-hmm. only work with people that you would be a f- not necessarily a friend with, but they're like outside of the workplace you would trust. Yeah. Right. Um, and the other business, Kuso Cuts. Uh, so my buddy I met in like 2020. Um, it's funny. Like I like to grill. Yeah. I, I love to grill. I love to cook. I think that cooking is very like emotional for me. Like I like to provide a meal for someone. I think that's mm-hmm. like a, maybe it's the Italian side of me. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but like I, t- I like to provide a meal. I like to like do that Form on a regular basis. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so I met my buddy. I was, I was following him on Instagram, mm-hmm. like a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. And uh, he makes barbecue videos. Mm-hmm. And I saw him check in in like Rockland, California. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I live in Rockland. So like yeah. I commented on the video and I was like, I don't remember what I said. And I was like, hey, I'm in Rockland. If you ever want to fucking grill or something, let me know. Yeah, yeah. And then he commented back and he was like, do you know of any gyms around here? <laughs> this, is like, this is like COVID time, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. Or he like DM me or something. I DM'd him. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I got one in my house if you like want to slide through. Yeah. So we just became friends and I saw like his rise to who he is. Like, um, his Instagram handle is all of his handles are chef Kuso. Mm-hmm. He's massive now. He's got like six, he just hit a million followers on YouTube today. I saw the tequila rub one. That, yeah. The one that I, yeah. Yeah. So he just and hit a million followers on YouTube today. He's got like a few mil on TikTok. He's got like 6 million across all platforms. Mm-hmm. But when we met, he had like a hundred thousand, yeah. maybe I think he had less than a million followers on TikTok. I can't remember, mm-hmm. but, um, Anyway, I saw him start to grow and he was doing brand deals. And I was like, Hey Jack, like in the event that you want to start like your own thing, Mm -hmm. I was like, let me know. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. because I know how to do everything digital wise. Yeah. I think we can grow something. And so anyway, uh, I never liked to like, they always say like you either have business partners or friends and like, I value mine and Jack's relationship so much. Um, he's my boy. And so like we did this song and dance for like eight months. And then finally he's like, all right, man, like we got to do this. Yeah. And we got to do it. So like, let's start yeah. this company. Um, and so we started the company up and like, we've just been on this like steady rise using my skill set from digital cartel, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and his notoriety and fame. Mm-hmm. And we've created what is now, um, a cool little brand, man. We yep. sell kitchen knives. Yep. Um, we sell now 10 different seasonings. Um, we're coming out later this year with more Mm -hmm. and some other products and we have like all the product drops and everything done and we're learning on a daily basis, man. Like I'm on, I was on a call before I got a call right after this Mm -hmm. for, for, for Kuso cuts too. And that one's cool, man. Um, and I, I love that. I love that company cause like I do a lot of client work at digital cartel. Yeah. Kuso cuts is like something like where I I can hold my product in my hand, Mm -hmm. my knife. I use it every single day. My rubs, use them every single day. Like that's yeah. a cool fucking thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Eventually you'll see us in like Whole Foods, yeah. Safeway, and you'll be able to walk down the aisle and be like, dude, that's mine. Like that's wild. Wow. Like you think about yeah. that, right? Wild, yeah, yeah. Um, and the last company is a cannabis distribution company. Mm-hmm. And I came on, I didn't start this company. Mm-hmm. Um, three of my buddies from college started the company um, that yeah, I played yeah. football with. Yeah. And, uh, I remember in 2017, my buddy Brian calls me and he's like, Hey Cody, it's like, listen, this is like right when we do coming legal. Mm-hmm. He's like, so me, Jimmy and Zach are going to buy an armored car and get like our CCW. And we're going to like drive weed up and down California. Damn. And I was like, Brian, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how it goes. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like he was always like a little out there a little mm-hmm. pothead. Yeah, I was yeah. like, do your thing, man. <laughs> um, six months later, he comes back to me. He's like, hey, so like we're, we made money. Yeah. Like we're, we're doing it. We got licensed. We're an actual distribution company. Um, here we are, what, five, six years later? Yeah, damn near. Whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And uh, 
we distribute. He's like, at that time, he's like, all right, we need somebody to do marketing. So I put in sweat equity or whatever in mm-hmm. the beginning of the business for the first few years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I came on as a CMO. I mean, we don't have like real titles, but like mm-hmm. I do the marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, here we are five years later, we distributed in like 650 dispensaries. Shit. Um, we distribute some like Sacramento brands, yeah. like seven leaves. We just started being the sole distributor of all their oh, products. Yeah, I know some um, reason. delighted preferred gardens, um, turn Ember Valley. We do labeling logistics, all that kind of stuff. So we have a warehouse probably not too far from here actually. Yeah. Um, and so that's cool, man. It, it's, they're all different things, but at the end of the day, my, what I bring to the table mm-hmm. is the same. I bring a marketing mindset. Yeah. You know, that's super so cool. that's, that's kind of how I got here. That's amazing, man. Yeah. It, it's, it's a trait that I think, um, you know, gets, it's, I was gonna say underappreciated because I think it, it definitely is appreciated, but it's a trait that I don't think a lot of people want to tackle on and have that, you know, that stress to, to do, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I man. think it's a lot more than people think is especially what I'm getting at. Yeah. Like communications and marketing is like such a little BS degree. I remember when I was in college, like I started out as a Canise major, um, ended up switching to an economics major. Cause mm-hmm. like, Oh, it's like what smart people take. Yeah. All my buddies that played football with, they'd do like a comms, like marketing major. Mm-hmm. Cause it was kind of like in at that time, what I thought was like a, a bullshit degree. Mm-hmm. I was like, they're just doing it to get it by. <laughs> um, but, uh, come to find out that like, communication is probably the most important thing ever like a comms degree and then marketing like if if i i'm learning this all on the fly and like having to research and do it like i wish i had had like formalized education around like actual business and marketing i probably would be a lot further off now Mm. so it's funny like back in the day everybody's like oh yeah comms like a bullshit degree and like now it's like an extremely important degree oh yeah yeah I mean, yeah, it's just the way you communicate. It's the way you, um, it's the way you translate. It's the way that you adapt. It's the way that you build partnerships, relationships, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? It's yeah, true. I mean, think about this. Like, even if either one of us were shitty communicators, then mm-hmm. we wouldn't be sitting here right now. And then there's a ton of people that are going to watch this and like gain a ton of value from it. And so, yeah. like, though, I think that communication is so important because even in any aspect of like a business or life. Mm-hmm for sure life communicating is big. Like think about like relationships, mm-hmm. romantic, non-romantic communicating is so big because like you have to be able to take what you're thinking and feeling yeah, or what somebody else was thinking and feeling. And you have to convey it into a message that your audience, just like you right now will understand and will also receive it in the way in which you intend. Right. Mm-hmm. I, it could be like something as simple as like just taking something that you saw on a podcast Mm -hmm. and regurgitating it to another person and they could receive it vastly different, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They could hear, somebody could literally listen to, if you didn't explain it as thoroughly as you did our podcast today and be like, Oh, these guys say that dads suck. (laughs) Well, no, I'm not saying that dads suck. I'm saying that dads need to be around Mm because dads are so valuable. Right. Just means break the cycle. Exactly. Break the cycle. It's a good one. But yeah, man. Yeah. No, it's insightful, man. It's, it's, it's everything that um, that I hope it would be and more when it comes to communicating with you. And I think the podcast itself is not only going to be beneficial, like I said, for the people that want to learn, for the people that are eager to learn, and for the people that, you know, maybe are in the the same or have the same mindset. You know what I mean? I, it's that. But also, I wanted to, I'm glad and I'm thankful that you opened up a bit too because you get to see another side of you that maybe, like you said, that you said before, maybe yeah. it's not just gym rats or gym junkies all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got to get better at that. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. That's what the podcast is for. But um, yeah, man, that's, damn, we, we flew on that. It's already past an hour. Uh, that was fast. Um, yeah, just give the people um, your, your socials, best way to contact, communicate with you. Um, Instagram is the Cody Allen, right? Yeah. D Cody Allen on everything, mm-hmm. website, Instagram, TikTok, kind on there, YouTube. Yeah. Um, I'm getting better at TikTok. All the things. Just, just, I'm bad at it. I'm just recording it. The <laughs> same clips that you see on Instagram are going to be on TikTok. Right. It's just, yeah. It's just a podcast page. I'm not actually on it. It's just a podcast page. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know what I mean? Um, any final thoughts, messages, or anything you want to tell the people? Keep doing this podcast. This is a very valuable podcast. Thank you. And it's you're doing a good thing for probably yourself, but also for people. When you look back at all this stuff, um, all the recordings that you've done, mm-hmm. five, 10, 15 years from now, yeah. you're gonna be able to look back and see where you were at mentally 
at different stages in your life. Just like you said, when was the most impactful time that I had? And you talk about that time, your senior year, mm -hmm. you might be talking about a conversation that you have eight months from now. And like, damn man, like that was the one that kind of clicked for me that changed my life. Mm -hmm. So I keep doing this thing. Timestamps. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, insightful, uh, motivational and encouraging for sure. Thank Appreciate you, Cody. It, um, yeah. Following everything. I hope you guys find value in this one and, Y'all stay safe and stay cool because it's supposed to be really hot this upcoming week. Bring it on. <laughs> Y'all stay safe. Peace.